This is Neil Schneider for MTVS TV at CES 2019. To my immediate right is Gaurav Arora. He is Vice President of Engineering for Synaptex. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Neil, no, my I, pleasure. I have to admit, I am completely surprised by the Synaptics exhibit because you guys do so much more than touchpads. Yeah. That's what I think of when I think of Synaptics. But really, your technology is in just about everything these days. Right. And I understand that you have a very strong focus on things like artificial intelligence and privacy in the home. Can you elaborate a little more as to what Synaptics focus is in that space? Yeah, I think the focus hasn't changed of the company. The company was founded on the idea, the innovation when it comes to human-machine interaction. So the first 20-30 years of the company, human-machine interaction was limited to laptops, then it became tablets, mobile phones, and the company was innovating in advanced technologies. But as you are all aware, in the last 3-4 years, there's a completely new paradigm. People are watching content from multiple different sources, they're engaging with devices using Netflix, they're using watching videos on YouTube, and on top of it, they're using their voice to make the devices do some actions for them. So it was just a natural evolution for the company to say, look, we've done very well in 30 years, focusing on these areas, now we're moving ahead to a different device category, which we call IoT, smart home IoT products, and that's what I represent. Now in these smart home devices, the devices are proliferating at a very fast pace. With mobile phones, there was still the element of privacy, security, because the mobile phone locks itself. It times out, it's a, it's a lock, it doesn't do anything, it's not listening to you. If you put a device which is always AC powered in your home, always on, it can, it's always listening, you start wor worrying about how much of my private conversations, my private behavior in my house is being beamed to the cloud. So what we want to do is do the smart actions on the device without sending the data to the cloud and that requires AI, machine learning, and that's why we're investing heavily in that. Well, I'll share with you a, a quick story. My son, uh, he recently got like one of the Google Home devices where you say, hey, Google, and it does stuff. We and he, thank and him for that. It's our chip, so we're very thankful that he bought a Google okay. Home. <laughs> well, the thing is, he loves it. Like, he just loves it. And he'll, uh, if, if a computer had emotions, I think he'd be driving poor Google crazy because yeah. he asks some questions that Google that doesn't have the answers for. But the thing is, at night, every night, he unplugs it. We're like, why did you unplug it? He goes, I don't want it listening to me. So and my son's all of you know seven years old, but it kind of ties in, right? That people, you know, they use it. It's a comfort device. It's a convenience device. They talk to it all day. But from what I'm hearing is there's that concern of you know what we're sharing, what we're saying, what Google's hearing could, is sent to the cloud, and there's obviously a responsibility attached there. So you're looking to find ways to protect the yeah. customer, I, I take it. So what, what are some of the strategies that you're looking at? So yeah, what we're looking at, first I'll clarify a point. We're not saying that Google or Amazon are using data in any wrong manner. We trust those companies, they're strong partners, they do an effective job of taking your data and using it to serve convenient features. What we're saying is to bring a little bit more peace of mind to the consumers. If we can detect events, if we can detect your voice, your image, and make the device personalized for your behavior, so you could set something like, if you see a person of teenage or lower, tell the device you're not going to do anything with that image. Only you, your voice, let's say you are the parent, you, are the, you have supervisory authority for all your devices, you don't care if your images and voice is being sent. So the device can filter that out with AI, it will be able to recognize it's Neil, and whenever he wants or she wants to do something, we let the whole transaction proceed. If it's Neil's son, we have set strict limits that from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m., regardless of he uses voice, whether he's muted the microphone or not, the device should just drop the package. But what it needs, to detect, differentiate between Neil and Neil's son's voice. That requires AI, that requires a neural network model, without enrollment. The other key phrase is enrollment, because the minute you say, Neil, enroll your son's voice, you have a problem with that. The enrollment implies that this data will be saved somewhere for the rest of the life of the cloud instance, right? No matter how many deletes you do on your app, it's 
there. It's there somewhere. So I don't want enrollment. I want the device to recognize me, my family members. And if Google, Amazon, or Apple, they want to build services where they say, yes, only Neil, you have the root authority, will you to do transactions with us. So what I'm gathering is like a smart gateway. Smart it's gateway is a good way of putting it. So we are saying not a device which is called a smart gateway. We want to add the smart gateway functionality in all of the devices. So with the power of our SOCs, systems on chips that we build, with the right AI on top of it, any speaker will become a smart gateway. Any set-top box will become a smart gateway. Any light bulb can become a smart gateway. What we want people to feel confident in using that device any time of the day, any day of the year, and that's our so, promise. So, so it sounds like, so it's not a, a, a product per se, like something that you add on to an existing device. It's something that you have, like an OEM relationship where your chips get put into the devices so that gateway is part of the feature set. Yes, yeah, so we will provide the hardware acceleration in our SOC for neural networks to be run on the edge. Today, when people say neural networks, they think of Intel CPUs in the Amazon web services, AWS cloud. Mm -hmm. They think about NVIDIA GPUs. No, that's for training. For inferencing, the kind of hardware we are building allows you to do very high level of inferencing, which is what you need on the edge. We will provide the software, the acceleration, the framework, an open framework, TensorFlow Lite, not proprietary. We're not trying to make vendor lock-in. That's not the business we are in because it's all about openness. So with those layers of software, our customers can build smart gateway functionality. We are providing the models on top of this thing, trained models to enable smart gateway. They can use the model, the neural network model we have trained. They can train their own model. They could do a combination of the two. So that's what we say. So it's not, you're right, we're not selling a new product. We sell chips, we're selling new chips. But any place you deploy that chip, our promise to our OEM partners and the customer is we are thinking privacy security as one main objective that we want to deliver. Okay, so two, two questions. First, you bring up the word edge, and I've heard it before, and just if you could clarify for our viewers what you're referring to when you say edge. So edge is the device that the human being interacts with. A mobile phone is an edge device. A laptop is an edge device. A t set top box is an edge device, a TV is an edge device. When we say edge, it's the edge of the network. Okay. So it starts from a cloud instance somewhere in, in Amazon Web Server or Google servers. Then there's all these routers and switches and all complicated gears. By the time, the day, where is the data being consumed at? That's called edge. So for us, edge means in the IoT smart home, that speaker, this box, this TV is edge for us. Smart camera is an edge device. Okay, perfect. Now the other thing is, we're you know, up until now we've been talking about who has the authority to, to um, a to enroll, b to share commands with Google, Alexa, and so on. Um, what about the nature of what's being requested? So, for example, uh, right now, if I say, you know. Google turn on my lights, I, that messaging has to go to the cloud and then get message back, or my thermostat, or whatever it is. There's always that linkage to the cloud and back. Um, is that being changed at all with technologies like this? There is a big value of cloud and that can never be replicated in the edge device. What we see emerging is uh, what happened to the enterprise ecosystem. In the early 2000s or mid 2000s, a lot of push happened to public cloud. There was a lot of buzz. The whole industry, the IT industry in the world said, public cloud is here to stay, public cloud will kill everything, all captive data centers will be will die out. Fast forward 2018, eight, nine years, what we are seeing emerging is hybrid cloud. There's on-prem data centers where corporations, banks, medical institutes keep some data for two reasons, latency, privacy, and then they do a lot of their back office in public cloud. So it, just think at that analogy, bring it down to smart home devices. For latency, for privacy, for security, some things have to happen on the device, but you can't live without the public cloud. So cloud will be there. We need the companies like Google, Amazon, Alibaba, Baidu, Apple, to keep innovating at a feverish pace because they're bringing so much value to the consumers. And, but what we think is, it won't be an all cloud story. It will be cloud plus on-device AI story. And that one, going back to the question you asked about controlling home automation, 
we're showing demos where, yes, with your voice, natural language understanding can happen with AI on the device. Some key phrases, like I say, it's hot in here, it will turn on the AC. It, you don't have to just say, please turn on the thermostat to 90 degree or 65 degree. Mm. You can say these phrases, which this device, edge device will interpret and do that action. And will in the background tell the cloud that your thermostat settings have been changed because my wife maybe is in the office and she's trying to, it's 3 p.m., she thinks the kids are coming home, let me set the thermostat. We don't want to go out of sync. But we can control with our voice the settings without requiring cloud. But cloud augments the whole use case. So if we don't have AI, then all we can do is take your voice sample, send it to the cloud, cloud processes it, sends an event back to the devices, set this to this. But here we are trying to do two paths, and that gives you redundancy, which anyone who's done high-tech business, redundancy is a key need of human beings. What if my, I'm living in, I think you come from Toronto, or if there is a big snowstorm, Sometimes electricity goes off, so it's, yeah, everything's toast. What happens typically, and I've seen it in Boston when I was, uh, for many, many years I lived there, electricity comes back very quickly because that's human necessity. My internet takes another day or two. Comcast will not roll a truck. In that period of time, can I stop turning on and opening my garage door? Do I wait for the cloud to come? No, I want my voice to say, I'm not going to walk out in my yard in sub-zero temperature to see if my garage door is open or closed. I should be able to use voice, I should be able to use a device to close it. And when the internet comes back, we're back online, you have a humongous amount of features at your disposal. Very good, so it sounds like you got some exciting things to come. New like devices, are, do you, have you established partners? I know you mentioned Google and Alexa, but have they confirmed that they're gonna start supporting this? So. They work with us. We are in, it's public knowledge, and, and David can correct me from an uh, analyst relation, but it's public knowledge that we are strong partners of Google. We supply our silicon. We're strong partners of Amazon. They work with us. And we are doing our small bit. Those giants are working at a different pace, but they see value. They say, hey, Synaptics, you're solving a problem. This is a good path you're on. And that's why they continue to work with us. And when it comes to OEMs, we have a huge number of products in the IoT space. Year after year, we're growing the number of products. So that's a testament to the fact that we're doing something right. Very good. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Neil. This is Neil Schneider for MTBS-TV at CES 2019. We will, of course, be back with more. Thank you for watching.